Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together around the Word of God. Help us to rightly divide the Word of truth. God, forgive me of my sin, my failure. God, make me clean. God, as I read the Word of God and try to preach, God, what you lay on our heart. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Joshua chapter number 1 and verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong, and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now that's my encouragement from the word of God. This is what I can know that I can live by. This is what I know that will help me. This is what I know will get me through these last days. No matter what we face, friend, uh, the word of God has everything we need in it to carry us through these last days that we live in. Uh, problem is people don't know the word of God. Problem is people don't want to know the word of God. Problem is people want to be be teach to they've got itching ears to hear something good but they don't have itching ears to hear the truth and a preacher's worth his salt these days should preach the truth amen y'all with me amen and so if we're living in the last days which i believe we are our greatest challenges in life we're about to face them everybody in here you're about from the youngest to the oldest our greatest Times that were, and, and some of the most difficult times are we're fixing to face because we're getting near the coming of the Lord. How much will we face before Jesus comes? I can't answer that question. Christians down through the ages have suffered. Christians all over the world today are suffering, whether they're, uh, you know, all they have to do is name the name of Christ and take a chance of being beaten or, or uh, uh, mutilated. Or take a chance on being killed just to mention the name of Christ. Now, Brother David, I can stand up here with pretty much assurance this morning that I'm not going to be attacked in the pulpit. And I, you know, because we live in, right now, listen, right now I live in a free country where freedom of speech, although being attacked from every side, and they're going to try to shut us up after a while. You watch, they'll come down on preachers and try to shut us up. But by the help of God, I'm going to stand. Amen. But right now, we've got that liberty. But I don't know what's coming down the road. Now, last week, and y'all probably, some of you done the same thing, and that's fine, but I'd like for someday somebody to explain to me why. Uh, last week, they started hollering snow. Uh, about Monday. Tuesday, they hollered a little louder. And on Wednesday, you would have thought a famine had hit the land. Now, fortunately, I was off that day, but I had to go clean up the mess on Thursday. But I did as much business in one day as I usually do in two days, and they all hit before 6 o'clock in the evening. Now, look, the same crowd, you, you, you know, people say, well, that helped you. No, it didn't. It kills us because the next day you don't do nothing. The next day you don't do a half a day's business, but that's here or there. But the same crowd by, by yesterday, back in there spending money. What did they do with all that food? And why? See, it was all over in the day. But people were preparing for, I guess, the worst snowstorm in history, I guess. And so I, I marvel at people that will prepare. They buy bananas, bread, and milk. Why bananas? I don't know. I guess I figure if they make a banana sandwich... With bread, they're all right. But they buy those three things, uh, you know, all you can sell them. But they prepare for something that they see and know is going to, or believe is going to happen because of what a weatherman says. I hoped he'd miss it. I was praying, Lord, let him miss it. Put that down south somewhere so all these people will be embarrassed. Amen. No, I'm just kidding with you. But, but anyway, you know, if I pray for it to go south, it's so I wouldn't have to deal with it. I don't like it. I'll just tell you, I don't like it. But anyway, people prepare for that. They get ready for that. And if we'd had a blizzard, and I think that's what prompted a lot of it, the blizzard we had years ago, people didn't prepare. And some of them, some people did go hungry, but that's all. Listen, it's preparation is what people are doing. 
But I can stand up here all day and I can tell you, I can, I can cry like Paul Revere going through the, the, the bridge is coming. And I can tell you Jesus is coming. And nobody seems to want to prepare for the coming of the Lord. But that's my, listen, I am, I promise you that I am more right than the weatherman is at predicting the weather. You know why? Because I've got eternal, God's eternal word telling me that Jesus is coming. Amen. And so, friends, we go about our daily business, and we should, rightly so, go about our daily business. But we better be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Amen. We better be prepared for His coming because certainly, friend, He is coming. Webster's Dictionary declares that the definition of being ready is to make ready beforehand for some purpose, use, or activity to work out the details of or plan in advance. Now, the fact of the matter is Jesus is coming, number one. Number two, the fact of the matter is you and I are going out of this world one way or the other. You're either going to die and fill a hole in the ground if you're saved, you're going to heaven. If you're lost, you're going to hell. Or number two, the rapture is going to take place. And those which are alive and remaining, the born-again believers, the saved, the children of God, are going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Those that are lost are going to be left behind and ultimately be cast into the lake of fire. Now that's the truth. How do I know? The Word of God. Now, I, see, I'm no prophet, I, you know, I'm, but, but, it, but I can tell you because I can tell you what the Word of God says about these things, and I know we need to be prepared. Now, if I ask you today, how many of you are ready to meet the Lord? Most of you would raise your hand, I'm ready to meet the Lord, I'm ready to meet Him, but I need to prepare for His coming because it's at the door, friend, it's at the door. He's coming, and it may be today. I'm getting tired of this world. I'll just tell you, I'm getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of, of all the junk that goes on in the world. And the, but you know what? Until Jesus comes, I don't care. If I'm wore out, I'm going to fight till Jesus comes. Amen? I'm going to preach the Word of God till Jesus comes. And, and I want to be ready when He comes. Now, what does it mean to be ready? Number one, we should prepare for the battle. Now, we've not faced nothing as believers much in this country as far as the battle goes. There's always somebody, there's always this group of non-believers call themselves atheists, and they're God-haters and God-deniers is all they are, and uh, they try to go about and, and silence me and silence you from uh, calling upon a God that they say does not exist. But you know what I think they are? I think they're cowards. Because they're trying to silence the truth. And, and deep down inside, they've got to know deep down inside that there's a God in heaven. Amen? I, I've never met an atheist. I met one that might have been, but he was crazy. But I've never met a true atheist because you go to corner them and talk to them about it. And they don't have a solid answer why they don't believe there's a God. But see, I've got a solid answer why I, why I know there's a God because my Bible tells me in the beginning, God. Well, how do you know that's true? Because it's the Word of God and He is the truth. Amen? Well, preach, if you don't believe the Bible, then you, that's exact, you're exactly right. If you don't believe the Word of God, you cannot be saved. Amen? So we got to be prepared for the battle. And this Bible is my training manual. This is my training manual. I, I bought a, uh, bought a purchase new a piece of, uh, uh, I bought a new heater for the house. I got tired of cutting wood all the time, so I went and bought a, a, a heat pump. Now, it's not what you think, not thousands of dollars. But I, I, I had to read up on that thing to make sure I knew what was going on. And so I got the little manual down. And I got that little manual down, and I, I looked at it, and I took it out of the box and done everything, put everything, and uh, I got to turning it on, and it come on all right. But you know what? I hadn't read the manual exactly right because it wouldn't heat. It was set on air conditioner instead of heat. And I wonder, what in the world is this thing blowing out all this cold air? This is not what I want. So I read back in there. And I read back. I started calling you Andy. I read back in there, Randy. And I looked and found out that I had to have it on the heat setting before it would work. 
You know how I learned that? I read the manual. You know how I know Jesus is coming? Hallelujah, I've read the manual, amen. And you know what it tells me? That if you and I and what we should be till Jesus comes is be faithful and we find how to prepare in the Word of God. Every, every instance in Scripture where a battle was won by God's people, it was done because of preparation. It was done because they were, they were prepared. This Word of God is my foundation. This Word of God is my strength. And this word of God is, if I'm going to be successful in anything I do as a believer, it's going to be based on the word of God. Now there's no hand manual for being a Christian, being a Christian and being saved except the word of God. And you can buy all kinds of books. You can buy all kinds of books on Christian living and all of that. But I'm going to tell you, the best one to have, they might be good devotional books, but the best one you can have on, on being prepared and living a godly Christian life is in the word of God. So if Jesus is coming, we must be prepared. We're not in a physical battle. I don't like fighting. I'll just tell you, I don't like fighting. I don't like it. I don't like it physically and I don't like it emotionally. I just don't like it. Somebody always gets hurt. And I've learned that no matter what, if someone attacks me, I'm going to do my best not to get hurt. Whether it be a ball bat. Or what, what else was that? <laughs> a ball bat or a bullet. Amen. I'll try my best not to get hurt. I don't like that. But I'm not fighting that kind of battle. I know what to do in those situations. Amen. But I'm not fighting that kind of battle. You as a believer are not fighting a physical battle. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And the, and the enemy is the devil. The enemy is the forces of hell and the devil. And I am no match for that. I can't handle it. And I'll get hurt if I do not use what the Bible gives me to use in a spiritual warfare. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now the Bible gives us, goes on to give us some elements of protection that we're to have and one of those is the word of God, the helmet of salvation, the word of God and these things that we prepare. That's how you prepare for the battle of the devil. How many, have had it, how many of you have had him on you? Seems like he's been on your shoulder all week. Raise your hand. Boy, I tell you what, this has been a week and I don't know if it's got to do with the short days and Cloudy skies or just the devil. I just blame it all on the devil. Amen. But, but listen, it's, it's been a week of it this week. Seems like if it can go wrong, it's gone wrong. Seems like if it can be disturbed, it's been disturbed. But listen, I'm not fighting a battle that I can handle on my own. I must have the help of the Almighty. Amen. I must have the help of the Spirit of God that lives within me. I got a, I, I'll tell you, <coughs> I related this to you several times. I've got a a thing when I go into work of the morning that I always, before I go inside, that I ask the Lord for his help. Amen. And that's, a, that's a, uh, one of many I do, but, but before I get in the doors, I say, Lord, help me today. Well, guess what I did? One morning I got up, I was frustrated and disgusted because of something that was going on, and I, I got up, and I didn't ask the Lord for his help. Now, you think as old as I am, and as, as long as I've been a Christian, Brother David, you wouldn't forget stuff like that, would you? You think, well, you, you'll never forget that, but sometimes I forget. And it doesn't take the Lord long to remind me, probably 30 minutes or less into the day, and I wonder what in the world is going on. And God reminds me, you didn't ask me for help today. So I get away somewhere and apologize to God and repent of my sin and ask for God's help, and he always comes through. And I'm telling you, friend, in these last days of battle that we're living in, we must have the help of God. I can't fight the devil by myself. He's too powerful for me, but he's not too powerful when I call on my big brother, amen. And who is that? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, and I can always call on my big brother, and he's going to come help me. 
I grew up with a big brother. And he got me out of some jams once in a while that I got myself into. But my big brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, is well able to help me if I'll just ask him, Lord, help me, and he will. My big brother, the Lord Jesus, comes to my rescue. We must, by the word of God, we must know the enemy, be aware of the enemy, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's your enemy, friend, the devil. Now, he prowls around. And he looks around, and he, he, he finds someone that's having a bad day, and he looks them over real good, and if he don't do nothing, to act, nothing else, Brother Mac, he, <laughs> and he scares them. I see the devil's a coward anyway, and, and, and he knows he's whipped, he knows he's beat, so all he can do is go around and, and bully people. Try to, that's what a coward does, try to bully everybody. You know, just... Keep poking at them and making them mad and try to get them stirred up and do something they shouldn't do. But you know how you know how a, a lion, you know how it overcomes its prey most of the time? It roars at them and scares them to death. Literally, the many, many of their things that they eat, their their, you know, their things that they prey on, they tell me that a lion will roar when they're real close to them and they will die of a heart attack or die of, 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 scare, of being scared. See, that's what the devil is. He's a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And he'll come along and over nothing he'll roar at you and scare you. Listen, call on the name of God when the devil's a roaring. Amen? Call on him in the time when the devil's roaring. And I promise you, friend, he'll be right there and the devil will take tail and run because he cannot. You know what I do and I'm having the roughest of time? I get in my heart a, a song about the blood of Jesus. Or I get in my mind a verse about the blood of Jesus. And I remember and, and think about that and keep that in my mind. And guess what the devil can't do? He can't get around the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's of his blood that he shed for me that the devil, amen, cannot get me, amen, take me to hell. Hallelujah. Everybody ought to just shout right there, amen. If you're born again by the grace of God, the devil ain't got no control over your, over your eternity and if we'll look to God, he can't have any control over our lives. And last, I'll say to you that we must, the battle is, is that we're facing our battles of many obstacles that come in our paths and come in our ways. We don't know what to do. If you ever run up against something, you ain't got a clue what to do. You ain't got a clue what to do and how to, but you call on God and God helps you. Now, what does God do? 1 Samuel 17, 47, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give, give you into our hands. God will help us because it's his battle if we, let him, if, if we say, Lord, this is your battle. The battle's the Lord. Now, I never win. I, I, you know, I go up against things sometimes, and I'm stubborn. Libby, say Amen. I'm stubborn, along with about 95% of everybody in here, we're stubborn, and sometimes we think we'll just do it ourselves. You ever do that? I'll just do it myself. You know what? Hardly ever does that ever work. Now, there's a few things once in a while I'll get by with, but spiritually I never get by with nothing when I try to do it myself spiritually. I never do. And what I wind up doing is doing what I should have done with the start with is calling on God and saying, Lord, this battle's yours. Please fight this battle for me. Now, I'll just tell you, sometimes a battle is not a, a battle that can be outwardly seen either. Sometimes it's an emotional battle. Sometimes it's a spiritual battle of the mind. And sometimes nobody else knows that you're going through a battle. But guess who does know? God knows. You might put on a pretty good face on the outside, but inside you're full of turmoil and heartache, and you don't know if you can go on or not. And oh, I tell you, friend, those sometimes are the worst kind. But when Jesus comes by and you say, Lord, I can't get through this, God, will you help me? God always shows up. Amen. God always shows up. So we be prepared for the battle. Look to the word of God and understand that he is going to help us and that we 
uh, are ready for whatever comes their way, but it's all because of him. It's all because of Jesus. Now, when you get prepared for the battle, and you get prepared for what's coming your way, and you let the Holy Spirit of God rule in your life, and you let him, listen, if you let the Holy Spirit of God rule in your life, then, friend, you're going to want to do better. You're going to want to be at church. You're going to want to be faithful. You're going to want to read the Bible. You're going to want to pray. And sometimes the hardest things that Christians deal with is reading the Bible and prayer. Amen? The devil hates that, and if he can keep you from it and keep me from it, he knows that we get our strength and our power through prayer and the Word of God. And if he can keep us there without God's Word, he's got us halfway with. But we got to understand the Bible is our, is our instruction manual on how to win this battle, win this fight, and have victory. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, after you fought the battle, or right, when you're fighting the battle, just look ahead to the victory that's on the other side. Now, we describe the Christian experience as, a, as an experience of mountains and valleys. And you might be in a valley right now, but there's a mountaintop coming for you sometime. And there, it may, listen, I heard a preacher preach one time. One of my favorites and one of my good friends gone on to be with the Lord. And Brother Dean Shook came and preached revival at my church when I was pastoring there. And he came and preached a message called the Long Valley. Brother Dean had a, had a brain tumor, had brain cancer, and it finally took his life. But he described it, never quit preaching, never gave up on God, and preached till the very end, till he had, as long as he had capability, he preached, and he preached the Word of God. But he said it was a long valley. And the only way he got out of that valley was when he went home to be with the Lord. Sometimes your valleys may be long, but remember, it takes two mountaintops for one valley. And so even though you might be in a, in, a, a, in a valley, you come off the mountaintop into a valley, you're going back up on the mountaintop. Now, if you're in the mountaintop, guess what? You'll get ready. You're going into a valley. Sometime you're going to be in a valley. And it might be a long valley. But you can make it by the help of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in grace. Listen, I'm going to tell you, the Lord's my shepherd. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, we always take that as being the shadow of death, in which it is. But there is a valley over in Israel called the valley of the shadow of death. And I won't get into it. You can talk to me later about it, but I've seen it, been there, done that. And David was talking about a valley that he had to go through. And it was a fearful valley. It was a hard valley. But he knew he could make it through by the help of God. And so, friend, if you're going through a valley today, hey, man, there's going to be a mountaintop somewhere for you. And you need to get ready for the victory and be prepared for a victory on the other side. We're prepared for a victory by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. We overcome the world and we prepare for victory by faith in him, by trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, Psalm 7, verse 1, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. If we're going to be prepared in these last days, we got to trust the Lord. Church, we got to trust God. And I've heard all kinds, you know, there's all kinds of things going around about churches being uh, shut down if they don't agree to do this and agree to do that. Amen. I tell you what, they're going to drag me out in handcuffs. Amen. You say you don't need me, that preacher. Well, amen. If they get me out of here, they're going to have to drag me out. As long as I can get here and preach, amen, I'm going to get here and preach to you by the help of God and preach you the truth. And I'll stand against sin and I'll stand against the things of the world and I'll stand against the things of the devil. Amen. I'm telling the truth. But I'm telling you, whatever happens, the victory that's going to come one of these days, even if we have to face that as a church, just we've got to trust the Lord. We've got to remember that he's the one that's going to see us through as a church. Folks, what you going to do if the government comes by and 
puts a lock on the door back there and says, y'all can't worship God no more. Who here has got bolt cutters? Anybody got bolt cutters? I <laughs> Look at there. One, two, three, four, five. I think we can get the lock off the door. Now, I'm more serious. Now, I'm serious about this. How many of you be willing to preach or cut the lock on the door to come on in and sit down and hear the message? Amen. Yeah. Amen. They can only do so much. Thank God, friend. I believe we ought to take a stand for what's right and take a stand for God and live in the victory and trust the Lord until Jesus comes. And all of this leads down to be ob being obedient to Him. To being obedient to the Lord. And friend, if we're obedient to the Lord, we prepare for the victory, we prepare for the battle. And we live in, by trusting God, by putting Him first, by reading our Bible, by praying, and by looking for the coming of the Lord. People ain't looking. It's humdrum. People's not looking. They don't expect Him to come, but I'm telling you, He's coming. Wake up. He's coming. So now are you prepared, last of all, for eternity? Are you prepared for eternity? you prepared for the battle? The battle? you prepared for the victory? Are you prepared for eternity? The Bible says that those that have called upon the name of the Lord, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those that have been under conviction shall of sin and knew they were lost and called on God for salvation or born again and on your way to heaven. You've made preparations for when Jesus comes. But all those that have never trusted in Jesus and never bowed their head and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, they never realized they were lost. They've never been saved. You've got to know you're lost before you can ever be born again by the grace of God. And those that have never done that, friend, are bound for eternity in hell just as surely as I stand here. And we should prepare to meet the Lord. We should make preparations to meet God. Are you prepared to meet the Lord? Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. God, we thank you for your help. I pray right now, God, you bless in the invitation. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While every, everyone stands, every head bowed, no one looking around, I want to ask you a couple of quick questions.